So hello and welcome back to the second episode of the Smoko's Garage. We are welcoming you back inside of Simon's dance studio. Uh, something that Simon has a big passion for is dance and I'd like to promote his up and coming YouTube videos. Cy on Ice, Big Man on Campus and Sliding Rain with Cy. They're all on YouTube, just type them in. So the first episode uh, was off to a good start. We had the golf anniversary which was um, shown to you in its, all its glory, stripped apart. We don't have much on that this episode, so we're going to be showing you other cars that we have going on. Some are rally cars, some are just cars that we're going to be using for hopefully entering a race series, which is all in the future. Also, we are going to be doing a Smoko Star video um, where we just go out, put our own music to it, which is made by Greg. Greg is the guy who looks like he doesn't know what's going on. Just on a Good. Sunday <laughs> jolly. I hate music. A lot of the time. Speaking of Greg, actually, he thought I portrayed him as a bit of a weirdo, um, which I don't agree with whatsoever. I just filmed him doing what he normally does. Shouts to Greg. But apart from that, this episode's gonna be a bit more fun, a bit more going on. To be honest, like I said before, if you've watched this second episode, or you've got to this second episode, I'd be highly surprised because it, we just, we're just completely winging this. Hope you enjoy the episode. This is Kilo. This is my dog. My friend, this is my brother's dog. Is this weird? No. About three years ago, I was uh, swimming in a pool in um, Finca Corsine in Spain. And I looked up and to my surprise, I saw uh, David Dickinson. He turned my attention to a BMW E10. Um, he showed me a picture which made me fall in love. From that point on then I tried to find one, which I eventually did, which was a complete wreck. No wings, no bonnet, no engine, no gearbox. It had like 1.5 doors, not two. I then spent a good few months, nearly a year actually, trying to find the parts I needed, which I eventually did, because they're really rare and hard to come across. Once I got everything together, I then needed somebody that was good at metal fabrication. So I enlisted Bob. He took a look at it and the first thing he said was, fuck me. So we're here at uh, Bob Dowin Rally Services, a friend of mine for the last um, probably two years who specializes in Mark I and Mark II rally cars. He's been doing it since 1974. He doesn't race himself anymore. So I've got two cars here, 1702, known as a, an E10. BMW. So this over the last probably four months has had the um, all the metal work that's needed doing. We've done rear boot pans, sills, rear valance, all the floor pans. There's been a couple of patchworks, bits of welding done in the back. So a lot of you guys will recognize S14, um, BMW, E30, um, M3 motor and gearbox. There's a bit of work to do in regards to this as you've got a dog leg sump on these. I don't know if you can see that just here. Because we're obviously fitting it into a, a lot smaller car than the E30, um, this dog leg becomes a bit of a problem. So we've got a new dry sump kit that I'm ordering this afternoon. So it needs this dry sump kit, which uh, when you ever read the word kit, you should always read further into finding out to make sure that all of that kit is everything you need. How much is that? That's $3,999.95. And uh, when you read further, this it only comes with so many things you need. You need more. Simon talks a lot about, about business, about his Mercedes. His, his Mercedes talks about that pretty much every time I see him. Yeah, the most common word you hear Simon say is Nürburg and Mercedes. We're also going to be doing some different work that currently the dry sump kits come with and with these current E30s. Most of the kits have the dry sump pump fitted here, but obviously with the motor being sat on the angle it's at, and the reason that I'm talking about this now is quite important, is 
The steering column also comes in this area of the um, exhaust manifold, which is already a problem, but obviously with fitting a dry sump pump on the side of here as well, we end up with three items in an area which is already going to be really small. So we're ordering the dry sump from America, but what we're going to do then is we're going to fit the dry sump pump somewhere else in the engine bay to give us what is already a, 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 a tight clearance space. We've currently got a, um, a steel dry sump here that we'll be able to fit on this motor, which hasn't got the dog leg on. <clears throat> One of the other things now, which we were toying with, a lot of people have, have tended to chop down E30 subframe so you can use the original motor mounts back to the subframe and all. But I think the, the E30 track, the width, the width of the, the subframes and suspension arms, etc. once they're on, is um, around eight inches too wide. So you've, you know, you've got tops of the shockers, bottoms of the shockers, the, the swing arms, etc. stuff like that. None of those on an E30 are adjustable. There's a lot of work that would have to go into fabricating, getting all that to fit. Now, obviously, Bob specializes in Mark I and Mark II rally cars. And um, what he suggested to do, which I think is, the, is probably the best way to go, especially with the type of way we'll be using this car, this will be a classic looking BBS style look from outside, but um, all of the running gear on the car will be, you know, a track focus, rally focus, probably more than anything here now. So this will be like a tarmac rally car setup. So what we are going to do, we're going to be fitting World Rally Championship um, front suspension, hubs, uh, suspension carriers, etc., stuff like that, swing arms, because you've got so much adjustment in forward, back, side to side. And the only thing we'll have to make is a subframe, which obviously will, will, will bring us back inside the, the width that we're looking for, because it's quite a, quite a thin car. And also then, rather than mounting the engine back to a subframe, like I said earlier on, which most people do with, with most cars now, the, the motor is actually attached to the subframe, so you don't get as much vibration from the motor. With rally cars, you actually fit the motors to the actual chassis of the car, which you get more reverb through the car, through the, through the revving of the motor, and you don't lose that power in the movement as the motor moves, um, because obviously it's on solid mountains on, on the actual subframe of the car. So Smokers asked me to make the music for the Japanese performance video, which I did. Um, I only had two days to do it, which is not that much time, but I did it anyway, and I was actually really happy with it. But um, someone in the comments wrote, Nice beat. Would be better with different music. This is a bit holiday brochure. <laughs> okay, so we've got a very cheeky number at the back, which I'm going to show you now. Here we have a Audi S1 short wheelbase Group B rally car. This has taken, I think, about 12 months to get to where it is right now. There's a lot of work that I'm hiding. We're not going to show you much to do with this car, but later on in the series, as this progresses, we'll definitely uh, show you more.